They're like, you know, fly a plane with this shit. Oh, hit cartwheel in my estate, and I'm go shine like I'm supposed to. Anti social extrovert, and excellentness never struck my nerve. And that's a riff gonna plead this case. The reason my power was here on earth, salute the truth from the prophecy. I, I, I got, I got, I got. I got. If there's one piece of equipment that has become synonymous with the recording studio, it's the SSL console. Used by many legendary mixers, the SSL has solidified itself as a remarkable tool. In today's video, I will explore how three legendary mixers, Mix by Ali, Jason Joshua, and Manny Mariquin, use this console in a modern context to help shape their signature sound. If there's any mixer that's carried the SSL legacy into the modern age, it's Mix by Ali. And if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know Ali's story. He initially started out mixing in the box. However, after being Dr. Dre's mentee, he was then exposed to the SSL. All the years me teaching myself how to mix, I've always been in the box. But uh, when Kendrick signed to Dre, you know, you know, he analog, he mixes on SSL 4000 all day long. So I just took what I know in the box and I mixed it with what Dre taught me on the, you know, on the SSL and kind of just created a hybrid of the two and kind of created my sound from that. In his early days mixing on the SSL, Ali would almost spread the entire session out onto the console, utilizing most of the channels. At the time, Ali was using the SSL 4000G+. Ali liked this board because Dre taught him how to manipulate it to give him certain sonic characteristics. G+, actually. 4000 okay. is my baby, yeah. And the reason why, because Dre always taught me this thing coming up. Um, there's this thing, when you clip that board with your drums, it gives it like a good peak. It gives it like a top-end yeah. shine that, you know, you can't be, you can't be, yeah. you can't learn from anywhere else. You know, there's it's, it's, it's ways that I know how to use this board to, to use that type of distortion in my favor, you know, to give that, that kick or that 808 or that hi-hat or whatever I'm, 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 I'm blowing out of proportion when it comes to level, I'm able to get a certain type of like peak or like a good distortion from it when I can manipulate it through this board. You know, when you're mixing on, on analog gear, you can, you, can, you can distort and you won't get a distortion sound. You will just get a, a, a more, you know, a more fatter sound if that makes sense. While a lot of Ali's significant work was done extensively stemmed out on an SSL console, Ali would eventually simplify his workflow to adapt with the changing times. Yeah, yeah, for like, a while, I went down to like eight channels, right? Like vocals, drums, yeah, yeah. keyboards, and I, 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 I want to get into doing that actually. But then the recalls is a bit. Yeah. Your hands on it? This essentially involved using the SSL as more of a summing mixer rather than a complete console. Looking at Ali's mix sessions, you'll notice five different auxes. These auxes are all being fed to the SSL. The Pro Tools output numbers correspond to input numbers on the SSL console. For example, vocals going out of 31 and 32, appear on channel 31 and 32. In addition to getting the sonic characteristics the board provides, Ali takes advantage of the board's EQ. Summoning a traditionally mono signal like vocals to a stereo pair of faders also gives Ali an advantage. It enables him to have more depth and width in his mixes. You're working on board channels where the left rights, even though they come up even, maybe they're 0.1 off, yeah, which gives yeah. like a tiny bit of width to something. Having these auxes also allows Ali to manipulate how he drives the console. For example, in this clip, you'll see him bring down the kick and bass fader. By doing this, he's hitting the console's input softer, which gives him less distortion. And you can see with his right hand, he's grabbing the faders and making up for it. Now, Ali doesn't just sum to four stereo pairs of auxes. Sometimes the pairs can be quite extensive. For example, here you can see the session for Childish Gambino's This Is America. All of those yellow tracks are master groups and sum out to stereo pairs of faders on the SSL. Melodies, not just drums, because his drums are crazy, but the melodies, whether it's guitars, whether it's strings, whether it's piano, and it's the, 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 the bridge of the two. Biatch! Another mixer who was a longtime champion of the SSL was Jason Joshua. During his prime run of hits in the late 2010s, almost all of his records are run through his SSL K. He, like Ali, when he started, extensively summed out his sessions onto the board. However, he eventually just used it as a giant summing box. I would, even though I was on the board, I wasn't like the Dre's. And the Mannies and the Serp, when they, when they were on the board, the console was a big summing bus. On the board, Jason would sum out groups of instruments, for example, all vocals, or all drums, but he would also utilize the board to do all of his parallel compression. For example, in this photo, you can see some of the old DBX-160 tricks that Dave Pensado taught him, ready to go. And he would also do parallel compression on things like vocals. For example, you can see the return of the parallel 1176 blue face next to Maluma's vocal. And here you can see him do more parallel compression with the stay level in 1176, as well as the 33609 and the 2055 for the background vocal parallel compression. But what was the actual sound like that the board was giving him? I know a lot of people say warmth, but it really to me isn't warmth. It's a, it's a character, you know, it's a punch, it's a drive. Um, it's the ability to, to separate things. When I used to walk into Larrabee, I would walk up to my 9K and I knew that 9K was going to make my shit sound, for the lack of words, 9K-ish. And I felt like, yo, my mixes are, are 
better than everyone else because I'm mixing through my 9K. And like Dave said, if I'm going to a gunfight, I want to take every gun. I just don't want to take one gun. I want to take my 9K. I want to take all my plugins. I want to take everything to this fight. If there's one common trait that all these pro mixers have, it's that the acoustic environments they work out of are exceptional. However, most amateur mixers have terrible home studios, which can greatly hinder their results. Luckily, I teamed up with multi-platinum and Grammy-nominated mastering engineer Gerhard Westphalen to bring you the acoustics course. Gerhard Westphalen is a studio acoustics expert, and he'll teach you the start-to-finish process for designing your own home studio. This includes creating a comprehensive master plan, measuring your room to find flaws, and building highly affordable acoustic treatment. For limited time only, I'm going to be giving away absorber build plans, a home studio design checklist, and a listening triangle setup guide. If you want to find out more about the course, just head to www.georgetmusic.com. Now back to the video. Now another mixer who heavily utilizes the SSL is Manny Merrick, and his console of choice is the 9000K. Hey girl, um, so that's my baby right there. I mean, look at this beauty. Why wouldn't you want to use this? That's, that's my girlfriend. And besides being obsessed with this console, Manny is also obsessed with switching studio monitors every year. What the hell? Oh my god! Now compared to the previous two mixers, the way Manny uses the SSL nowadays is quite unique. He still to this day stems out entire sessions onto the SSL for mixing. One main advantage of this is the lightning quick workflow it gives him. For me, my approach on the console is just basically I can multitask. I can show, I can do 20 things in 10 seconds. And I'm talking about literally 20 things in 10 seconds. The console for him also acts like a giant temp. He has various processing and insert ready to go on the channel inserts, which makes working with outboard gear super efficient. Okay, I know that Send 1 is my 480, Send 2 is my AMS. I know that Bus right. 46, 48 are my vocal background chains. My 1176 on 27, which is usually my lead. On 26, I got a CL1B so that I can choose which one I want to use. And, uh, and then, uh, so that's sort of like, I don't, you know, like we talked about templates, but that's sort of the basic setup. As far as my equipment, I'm still sort of a, a hybrid of analog and digital. I go through the board, I use it as a sort of a tape machine. I process analog, do parallel compression, compression EQ and all that analog. And then I'm doing uh, a lot of plugins as well. Um, so it's a, it's a hybrid. It's, uh, I would say it's a 50-50. And when Manny's done working on the console, I'll print out stems into Pro Tools. From there, I'll make a stem session where you can do minute changes without having to completely recall the mix. I hope y'all enjoyed that video, taking a look at some of the SSL workflows of the pros. If you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Anyways, I'll see y'all later.